so a little bit of abstract here. I'll make sure you guys can see that clearly. So I um, got some research from some studies, so we'll go over it here. So the study investigated the genetic and environmental influence of testosterone during adolescence using data from studying twins in their teenage years, and specifically among males, differences in testosterone were profoundly heritable via genes. In contrast, females were substantially different with testosterone and genetic heritability. Environmental influences, not genetic influences per se, of twins of, I mean, were assayed by salivary samples. And we had biometric models were used to estimate the genetic and environmental influence on the variants and covariants in testosterone with and without controlling for their association with puberty and adolescent brain development and to test for sex differences. So androgens action. So testosterone is an androgen. Androgen contains basically all your germ cells and that kind of thing. So androgens action on the cerebral vasculature are complex as they have been shown to have both protective and detrimental effects depending on factors such as age, dose, and disease. When administered chronically, androgens are shown to be pro-angenetic, promote vasoconstriction, and influence BBBB, which basically means blood-brain barrier perm permeability. So low levels of circulating androgens should be considered as a significant risk factor for the development of AD and memory loss. So with a reduced level of testosterone in the plasma of men, if administered, it improves cognitive performance and memory. So treatment should be started at an early age of the disease if you have dementia. So in the future, it is necessary to conduct studies on a large population, take into account personal factors and a more specific approach to assessing cognitive functions and the causal relationship of testosterone and AD and brain development. So if many um, are familiar with the term testosterone, testosterone, of course, is a steroid hormone. As you can see on the diagram I have here, this is basically the chemical structure and makeup of that. You see the oxygen um, double bond at the end, and you see all the hydrogen bonds in this specific molecule. And all these things together essentially is what makes it be this great steroid hormone. And what do steroid hormones do? Of course, as you can see, 10 more men used to have this. And since, since more men have it, that essentially means that you can see the, I guess, the more hair, more muscle contraction, more abilities with navigation and spatial, basically motor skills with that. And you can also see um, faster development, um, more so physical traits. But as you can see, um, even just by observing in nature, it necessarily doesn't influence necessarily advancements and for so to deal with the brain per se. So they aren't necessarily smarter in that sense. So you can see those effects um, basically generally. So introduction and background. So we know that testosterone is a steroid hormone. It is an index of the hypothalamic pituitary gonadal axis, a primary neuroendocrine system involving the advancement of puberty and regulating human behavior. Testosterone levels increase over the course of adolescence, particularly in men, and have individual differences in testosterone associated with socially dominant and status-seeking behavior. Indeed, increase in testosterone is necessary for male physical development, as I just spoke about. Um, usually see a decline um, in society today, or they say in modern times, you can see that usually it's more estrogen, um, I guess in certain foods. I don't know how exactly true that is because I haven't tested foods to really see um, the chemicals makeup of these foods. But as you can see, there's a lot of studies that have been suggesting um, the influence of, of, you know, the highly processed food, the influencing of different cultural shifts, um, a lot of things being spread on media, and things also in um, embryonic um, and fetus development that can later affect how, you know, our brains develop throughout childhood, toddler stage, adolescence, and all that great stuff. So testosterone also rises in females because women have testosterone too. Men have estrogen too. So studies of situational driven changes in testosterone have indicated anticipatory release of testosterone in men, but not necessarily with women. However, these findings have not been always replicated and some have recently 
um, research has suggested that these gender differences in testosterone response are only apparent in the context of complex interactions, but with other variables. So we know that, you know, the brain, the brain is a large organ, but of course we have, you know, our skin, the lungs, the stomach, the liver, um, the intestines, all these organs are massive, especially in, in, in terms of the size of our brain. Now, even though some people, you guess you may say have a big head or whatever, but in all um, seriousness and realistic, um, the brain doesn't make up a large part of a body mass, but it does consume a lot of energy. And a lot of energy comes in the form of oxygen and ATP, adenosine, triphosphate. Um, and, and adenosine triphosphate derives from metabolic reactions that we usually get from nutrients in our food. Um, these are the macromolecules that we all need, carbohydrates, proteins, um, fat, lipids. Um, fats are a form of lipids um, as well. But testosterone has major effects on the cerebral vasculature under physiological and pathological conditions, such as cerebrovascular diseases, which are both highly prevalent and life-threatening. But very little known is known about the effects of, of androgens like testosterone, estrogen, and so forth. But in this um, research, I'll be focusing on testosterone, of course. But um, as you can see, most circulating and androgens are testosterone and dihydrotestosterone and are synthesized in something called the gonads and also the adrenal glands, which are above the kidneys. So androgens readily, readily cross the blood-brain barrier, and the blood-brain barrier is basically um, your blood vessels and its interaction with the fluid and the other gray matter and white matter of the brain. And it's very selectively permeable. So anything can just flow in. And that's, of course, great for our survival and for our, our you know, being alive, for our existence, and so forth. So any, so no random pathogens can just get in. It has to be able to be able to bind correctly. It has to be able to have the right base lock and key mechanism. And it has to have the right structural component of that molecule to be able to either um, dissolve or be able to fit through and change the structure, which changes the function inherently. But indeed, testosterone can be metabolized and a more potent androgen receptor agonist. Moreover, both um, testosterone and dehydrotestosterone can be further metabolized into hormones that activate the end estrogen receptor. And as you can see here, I have the names of that. You all can have a visual of those words and get familiar with those words. But as we, as I've been talking about diseases and health and all this stuff, so we know that AD or Alzheimer's, as you can see, is a neurodegenerative disease that causes dementia in most cases of dementia that's been reported. So AD and dementia is not inherently the same thing. AD is a form of dementia. And we know dementia is basically loss of brain cells or neurons or gray matter or um, whatever you want to refer to it. They all relatively mean the same thing. Um, usually in the temporal lobe region and the temporal lobe region is usually where the region that you have um, that's associated with memory, with navigation, um, with emotions, with um, a little bit of learning, um, and also a little bit of comprehension, speech, um, sound processing, and so forth. So um, AD is found in people usually over 65 years of age. So usually older people report these cases. And that, of course, makes sense. Your metabolism slows down. Your cells don't um, act, no function and carry out certain processes as efficient as they should. Um, so, and that's basically how you die because your metabolism slows down, your cells aren't replicating and, you know, maintaining their health as efficiently as they should. So that's, that's basically what death even is. Um, so AD is characterized by abnormal deposition of the beta amyloid in neurons with the formation of extracellular plaques responsible for neuronal degeneration. So this could look in many ways like the myelin sheath could degrade a myelin sheath helps with neural impulses transmitting um, and, and it insulates the axon. So the axon is the middle part of the neuron cell. Um, so many different ways this can happen. Um, so yeah, here I have um, 